Today we're going to have another experimental video. This is what's called a vacuum former. It's typically found in the dental field and it's used for partials, bite trays, that sort of thing. This is a really old model made by OmniVac. But don't worry, if you're not in the dental field, you can actually build your own. In fact, Bob from I Like to Make Stuff actually built a larger scale one on his channel. I'll put a link in the description below. Also, if you want a dental style unit, you can find these on eBay and even Amazon. I'll also add an Amazon link below the video in the description. There's not a lot of controls on this. The first toggle is the heater, which is up here. There's a set of coils at the top that actually heat up the plastic. The other toggle is our motor. Which essentially is just a very small, very powerful vacuum. And here lies all the vacuum holes. Right below the heater, you'll find the tray. This is where we put our plastic in and secure it down. The plastic sheets are available in a variety of thicknesses. Here we have a .040. This is more of a rubbery material. This is typically used for bleaching trays. Now this is the material that I found has worked best. This is a .020 plastic. It's more of a harder plastic. Now if you're not in the dental world, this may not make sense to you. This is what they call temporary splint material. This is a clear material. The blue you're seeing right now is just a protective coating. It's a good idea to wear gloves to prevent any fingerprints from showing up on the material. Now I'm sure there's a variety of materials you can use, other plastics, maybe even styrene, that kind of thing. But we're gonna stick with what I know. And you can also find this on eBay as well as Amazon. I'll put a link in the description. And don't make the mistake by just searching for the size. There are different materials in the same size. For example, they have coping material. It's also .020. The material that we are using is similar to what you would find on an RC car body made out of Lexan. The first thing we're gonna do is peel off this protective film. As you can see, the plastic is completely clear. The first thing we're gonna do is position the film into the tray. And on this model, there's a rubber tray that goes all around the outer edge. You want to make sure the piece is sitting on that rubber tray. Go ahead and close the door, clamp it down. Raise the machine into the heating position. Make sure you have your heater positioned over the plastic and turn the heater on. Now we're going to put our casting in place and wait for this to heat up. Now there's a few different ways of actually checking if your material is ready. Some people like to wait until they see a droop. Personally, I actually like to feel it to see how soft it is. Another reason for the gloves. And all we do is just poke around a bit and you can see it's getting more pliable. Now this is hot, so you don't wanna to touch it for too long. Now this can be a trial and error process, but you'll eventually get the feel for it. Essentially, when I'm checking it out, I want there to be as little resistance as possible when I push up on the plastic. It will almost feel like my finger is gonna go through. Once we feel like we have the correct temperature, we're gonna turn our motor on. And you have to do that in kind of a swift motion. We can go ahead and pull our plastic piece out. Now that I've shown you how this process works, I'd like to go over some of the ideas I had for using it. First, you can leave it just like this. So if you wanted to ship this to someone in a protective package, you could easily do so. And to pop the car out, we're going to gently push on the car and the plastic and pop it out. This is essentially a duplicate body just made out of this plastic. If you wanted to, you could cut it all out and then paint it from the inside. You don't wanna really paint this on the outside. You'd wanna paint it like an RC body from the inside. So first you would mask the windows, anything you'd like to mask and paint it with some Lexan style paint. We could also just cut a basic outline out. Now you could cut as much detail out as you'd like, but essentially we have a Hot Wheels car cover. And this is crystal clear. Unfortunately, you can see my fingerprint on the body of the car. Depending on how well you cut this out, it would be hard to tell that the plastic's even on the body. And of course, you can also remove it. You could also use this to make reproduction plastic parts. So if you need a hood, so whatever part you need, you just cut it right out of the mold. Now we have one hood. 
We're also going to make some fun things in this video, so be sure to watch it until the very end. Although you can duplicate a body using the entire casting, you can also just use a body by itself. This is a redline barracuda. Now you can certainly make windows just by cutting out the plastic, easy enough. But I'd like to see if this actually works. I'm going to start out by taping the outside of the windows. Now we've got them all taped up, we're going to sit the car upside down. The reason why we tape the outside of the windows is so the plastic material does not suck out of them or through them, however you want to look at it. This is what happens when you don't have it against that rubber seal. They pulled it away. Obviously I didn't pay much attention to it. Now we're going to cut away some of the excess just so we can have a look. Now this is my first time trying this and it happens to be on camera. It definitely has its flaws. But for the first time trying it, I'm very happy. I didn't have the tape quite tight enough. You can see a ripple there, which is actually just ripples in the tape. The windshield's a little bubbled. And in the back, I didn't have it tight enough either. A little bit more of a bubble than there should be. Now you could also use this to make a duplicate of a base. This may be useful if you want to lower a car, or you've got a broken base, or you have a casting that doesn't have a base. Or like in this case, if you like to make gassers and you have the 55 gasser chassis, but you want to make other gassers, you could always use this as a reference point and just make a bunch of gasser style bases and build your car around them. Now keep in mind with the material this thin, the base is not going to be very strong. I would recommend a thicker material or maybe even brushing some resin on the base just to give it some rigidity. Now this material is somewhat stiff, especially when you start putting curves and bends in it, stiffens it up even more. So as long as the casting wasn't going to be played with, you could probably just use this by itself. Another cool thing about vacuum forming cars and parts is that these actually create a mold. You could actually fill this mold with resin and create a chassis that way as well. Unfortunately, I don't have any resin on hand at the moment, otherwise I would give you an example. Now we're just going to make a couple of fun things. Remember Scooby-Doo? Now we have some ice cubes in the form of the Scooby-Doo van. And since you can make ice cubes, that also means you can make Hot Wheels popsicles. During the footage, we also made a mold of this Mercedes 6x6. Now unfortunately, with this 6x6, I didn't have quite enough chocolate. Also, I just used a regular Hershey's bar. We don't typically keep chocolate around the house, so on the way home I picked up just a regular Hershey's chocolate bar, but I tried to make it work. It's a little crude, but hey, we actually made a Matchbox chocolate bar. And with the real one, you're not going to be able to do this. So there you have it. I think I've came up with a few creative ways that you can incorporate something such as a vacuum former into your Hot Wheels customization. And this goes beyond the vacuum former. The whole point of this video is thinking outside the box. And there's a possibility that you have something in your industry that you can incorporate into your customizations as well. So for me, being in the field that I'm in, you'll see a lot of dental picks, obviously toothbrushes, even dental hand pieces, and now a vacuum former. If you notice something in the video that you'd like to own for yourself, like the rotating display stand, the vacuum former, any of those items, I have Amazon links located below the video in the description, so be sure to check those out. Also, if you'd like to become a member of Patreon, I have a link to that as well. For a pledge as little as a dollar a month, it gets you eligible for the monthly custom giveaway. And speaking of Patreon, I'd like to thank my top patrons, which are Corbin Toll, Gary Burke, and Mark Kidd. And a huge thank you to all my supporters and subscribers. The channel just hit over 100,000 subscribers, and that was my goal for 2018. Without you, that never would have happened. Also, be sure to check out the channel on Instagram. We have sneak peek pics of upcoming YouTube projects. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post those below. And as always, thanks for watching.